Hi there, this is Ivan again. And <laughs> in the previous talk, we have seen how Canvas eliminates performance interference for multi applications on remote memory. However, after all, is the remote memory fast and user-friendly enough for each application? In this talk, I will present our work Hermit, which takes a step further to achieve low latency, high throughput, and full transparency simultaneously for remote memory. This is joint work with my collaborators from UCLA, MIT, UCSD, and Alibaba. Data center today is facing challenges from both software and hardware. On the software side, data center applications are shifting to the microservice architecture with high fan out. The tail latency of each microservice must be low to ensure optimal application performance. On the hardware side, Remote memory systems represent a prom promising direction to improve data center resource utilization. Data center must balance the need for low latency and the need for high resource utilization, which poses new challenges to the system design. In a typical remote memory system, the whole server is connected to a remote memory pool by a fast network and applications can access remote memory leveraging the OS kernel paging and swap system to benefit from additional memory. However, due to the hardware latency and network driver overhead, remote memory access is usually slower than local DRAM access. To make matters worse, kernel swap adds further additional software overheads to remote memory access, which negatively impacts applications tail latency. To visualize the performance impact, we run memcached on remote memory to me and measure the distribution of its remote memory access latency. As, as shown in this figure, the latency starts from 8 microseconds and increases dramatically to thousands of microseconds at its tail, which is orders of magnitude slower than the raw hardware latency. For latency critical applications such as memcached, such slow remote accesses can easily ramp up its end-to-end -end serving latency by about 2,000 times, and leading to vast SLA violations. So what is kernel software overhead? Here, we show the stages of remote memory access and break down their cost on Linux. When application access remote data, it first triggers page fault and traps into the kernel space. Before swapping in the page, the kernel must ensure the current process have enough stream memory for the incoming page. For some lucky processes with enough memory, they can bypass page recognition and go ahead. But otherwise, Linux must reclaim memory to make room first. To make matters worse, kernel swap batches 32 pages in a single reclamation call to reduce reclamations of frequency. This is a long stage that, blo that blocks swapping and hence prolongs remote memory access latency. Next, as there can be multiple threads swapping in the same page, Linux synchronizes the concurrent swappings with lock primitives. This design saves IO bandwidth by reduced swapping requests, but impacts latency and hurts scalability. Then Linux checks and updates the page metadata including page table entries and swap entries. Finally, Linux can issue the I.O. request to fetch the faulted page. Meanwhile, it may issue multiple prefetch requests as well. The request goes through a network to reach remote memory, and it takes an average of 9.1 microseconds to get a 4 kilobytes page. Putting all stages together, kernel swap as at least 32% of software overheads to a remote memory access. And such overheads can be even higher when page recommendation occurs in the page fault handling path. So how to overcome kernel software overheads and reduce the latency? The conventional wisdom is to bypass the kernel entirely and let applications access remote memory directly from the user space. This approach can eliminate kernel software overheads, but it typically comes with the cost of transparency. 
kernel bypassing requires application level modifications and making it impractical de to deploy across all applications in data center. Besides, kernel bypassing also means that application loses the kernel protection and resource isolation. Our aim here is to answer the following question instead. Can we eliminate performance bottleneck in kernel directly and achieve high performance and transparency at the same time? A simple observation here is that page reclamation, although it's very expensive, it actually has no data dependencies with remote access itself, so that it can be executed asynchronously. Actually, that's what current lens kernel and the prior state of art fast swap is doing. They either, they either created a daemon thread or assign a dedicated core for reclamation. However, our previous breakdown has shown that even them failed to reduce the remote memory access latency. Why? Well, a detailed examination actually reveals that both Linux and FastSwap, they use static policies to control the reclaim threads, regardless application status. Therefore, when swap is intensive, they failed to keep up with applications increasing memory consumption rate and page reclamation occurs on the critical path again. In fact, to achieve optimal performance, it is a must to control the asynchrony and adjust them dynamically to match the reclamation throughput to the application demand. Also, it requires the kernel to answer two important questions. When to start reclamation and more how many CPU cores should we assign for reclamation? To see why this is challenging, let's suppose we have an application running with some amount of CPU cores and memory. If asynchronous reclamation starts too early, while the application has not fully used its memory, then a large portion of memory will be underutilized, which hurt application performance and waste local memory. However, if reclamation starts too late, then the application may exhaust its local memory and its subsequent remote memory accesses will be blocked again by the direct reclaim page reclamation in the critical path. Similarly, if we assign reclaim threads to few CPU cores, they will not be able to keep up, keep up with application's memory consumption rate and leading to memory exhaustion again. But if reclaim threads use too many CPU cores, they will start to contend with user threads and interference application performance. Hermit solved all the problems by creating a set of reclaim threads in background and scheduling them adaptively with feedback signals. We call this design feedback directed asynchrony. This figure shows an overview of Hermit's design. Hermit controls the number of cores for reclamation by monitoring the application's local memory usage dynamically. As the curve indicates, Hermit gradually increases its asynchronous reclamation throughput, and the policy can be roughly divided into three phases, marked by the low watermark and high watermark. To differentiate the urgency of, uh, reclaim, of asynchronous, asynchronous reclamation. When application does not swap intensively and its local memory usage is below the, local, is below the low watermark, Hermit disables asynchro asynchronous reclamation to let applications have all CPU cores and maximize their performance. When the application uses more, more memory, and its memory budget is running low, Hermit scheduler starts asynchronous reclamation. At first, Hermit will only assign a single core for asynchronous reclamation and hoping that it can relieve the memory pressure with minimal compute with, with, within the remaining memory budget. 
and so that it can minimize the interference to application threads. When application swaps at a higher rate and is about to run out of memory, Hermit now must unlash the full power of reclaim threads and assign enough CPU cores to match the reclaim throughput to the swapping throughput to avoid direct, direct reclamation blocking swapping. To better fit this curve with applications' different swap behaviors, Hermit dynamically adjusts its high watermark and low watermark. The high watermark is initialized to the memory limit of the application and decreases proportionally to the current swapping throughput. Our intuition here is that we should start ramping up reclamation sooner when application gets more swap intensive to avoid pot potential delays. And to probe the best value for low watermark, Hermit measures the average page turnaround, which is the duration for, swapping, for swapped out pages that rem to remain untouched. Intuitively, a high, a high page turnaround indicates that application won't touch the, the swapped out pages in the near future. Therefore, Hermit can decrease the low watermark and start reclamation, reclamation earlier, as long as the page, the page turnaround time remains high, and, it, and so that it won't hurt application performance. Combine all pieces together, Hermit successfully eliminate direct page reclamation in the page fault path. Hermit also takes other non-urgent operations off the critical path in the, and overlaps them with, with I.O. for further latency reduction. We will omit details here, and you can read the paper for more. OK, now we have shown feedback direct asynchrony can achieve low latency. But how about throughput? Simply moving page recommendation off the critical path does not necessarily improve throughput, because although running in background, reclamation still requires the same amount of CPU resources to do the computation. And to improve the throughput, we have to try to make page recommendation more CPU efficient to leave more CPU resources for application. Our insight here is that only page fault handling path is latency critical whereas the reclaim, reclaim threads is off the critical path, so that we can safely aggressi and aggressively optimize the reclaim throughput while batching without hurting application latency. Note that this is not possible in the original Linux or FastSwap, because page reclamation may still occur in their latency critical path Hermit aggressively batches various expensive op operations in the page reclamation path for a group of pages, including TLP shootdowns, page I.O. writes, cgroup accounting, etc. Batching makes page reclamation 2.9 times more CPU efficient and saving the CPU cycles for application threads to achieve higher throughput. It's worth to mention that all our optimizations and feedback collections happens purely inside the kernel space. In other words, Hermit remains its fully transparent transparency to applications. We implemented Hermit on top of Linux 5.14 and evaluated it with six real-world cloud applications. With the next few slides, I would like to show how Hermit maintains low end to end tail latency as well as improves throughputs for applications compared to the previous CLR system fast swap. We use memcached as an example of latency critical application and measure its end to end 99% tail latency under varying load. The ideal case is to run memcached with only local memory and we get this curve. As we can see, it maintains low 99% tail latency when, uh, until the load reaches to about 4.5 million ops, where MacHD saturates our CPU cores. 
if we run memcached on top of fastswap and cache 70% of its working set in local memory, in other words, 30% of its working, uh, working set is on remote side, we see a significant throughput drop. Memcached fails to maintain low tail latency under as low as 1.1 million ops, which, uh, where direct recommendation starts to block swappings. This green curve shows the performance of Memcached on Hermit. Now, Memcached maintains low latency even under a relatively high load, for example, 3 million ops. Compared to fast swap, Hermit reduces Memcached's tail latency by 99.7% and improves the throughput by 3.2 times under the same latency SLA. Compared to the ideal local-only case, Hermit enables application to run on remote memory with only 20% performance difference. We also evaluate other two latency kill applications on Hermit, and they also show a similar trend. Feedback direct asynchrony and batch reclamation also helps Hermit to improve application throughput for batch processing applications. Under varying local memory ratios, Hermit consistently outperforms fast swap, offers an average of 1.24 times higher throughput. In conclusion, Hermit defies the conventional wisdom about kernel-based remote memory, demonstrating that it is possible to achieve low latency, high throughput, and full transparency simultaneously. The key to the success of Hermit is to apply asynchrony, and more importantly, put it under a feedback loop. We are also trying to generalize the idea to other kernel design components, such as page migration for its CXL-attached memory. Finally, Hermit can be deployed together with Canvas to deliver efficiency, efficient and isolated remote memory for multi-tenant cloud. Our code is released on GitHub. Thank you, and I'm happy to get another set of questions.